uh, in a more serious uh, in a more serious vein, the reference to the fifteenth of Shvat as being the new year of trees does appear in the Mishnah. Many of you might have learned uh, the first Mishnah in Rosh Hashanah that talks about four new years in the course of the year. And one of those new years, according to Beis Hillel, is the 15th of Shvat. According to Beis Shammai, it is the 1st of Shvat. We follow the ruling of Beis Hillel. But as far as the mission is concerned, it's a very technical idea that is not necessarily an occasion for rejoicing. It simply refers to the idea that we know you have to take masros, tithing from the various fruits, and uh, fruits of one year cannot be used uh, to complete the tithing obligation of another year. So the definition of the demarcation of a year, the Mishnah says, is that any fruit that budded or blossomed after the 15th of Shvat is a new year fruit, and it cannot be combined with fruits that budded prior to the 15th of Shvat that are called old year fruits. Again, it's a technical idea, and the Gemara discusses the various halachos, it is not in and of itself an occasion for rejoicing, but already in the time of the Gaonim, which were shortly after the Gemara, we do find that there's an Indian to have a certain Simcha on the 15th of Ramat and to celebrate by eating the fruits of Eretz Yisrael, the seven species, and in particular, the fruits that grew in Eretz Yisrael. But the notion of what later became known as a Tu B'Shvat Seder fully got developed only in the time of the Arizal, uh, the great Kabbalists of Sfat, and of course we've all been, been, been to Sfat, uh, and the Talmudim of the Arizal created, based on the Arizal's teachings, a whole elaborate ceremony uh, which has many, many uh, deep Kabbalistic meanings. Uh, there is a long form and a short form of the Seder called Tu B'Shvat Seder. The, long, the short form requires that you eat 12 different types of fruits. And the idea of 12 is because the yud ke vav ke, the four-letter name of God, can be arranged in 12 different configurations, as opposed to 16, because two of the letters are the, are the same. And each combination brings down a special divine energy. And each fruit is mechuvan. It corresponds to one of those combinations. Uh, but there is even a longer form of the Seder, which involves 30 different types wow. of fruits. And the 30 types of fruits are divided into three categories. The first 10 are those that are totally edible, like a grape, there is no peel, and if the seed is grape, uh, and then you eat everything. Uh, an apple also counts because the peel of an apple can be, can be eaten. Uh, the second involves fruits that are edible on the outside, but have pits, like apricots. And then the third level is the most contained. Those are the uh, fruits that inedible, have an inedible outside. Well, 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 huh? like watermelon. watermelon would qualify a that. That's an adama. And again, the Kabbalistic concept behind this is a bit complicated. I'm not going to fully develop it. But the basic idea is that the fruit, that which is edible, represents goodness and completion and wholeness and kedusha, and that which is inedible represents blockages. And we're going from the higher to the lower, meaning up in Shemayim, when Akash Baruch Hu first gives his beneficence, it's totally good. But then as we get more and more in <coughs> earthly Averos and Yetzirah, it's more and more blocked. And uh, we're, we're trying to recognize to bring the higher level from the higher level to the lower level. But be it as it may, whether you eat 12 or whether it's 30 or whether it's simply uh, some of the fruits of Eretz Yisrael, there are a lot of meanings to this. The simplest meaning, which should not be ignored, because even though we have very deep meanings, Chazal teach us, Ein mikra pshuto, don't ignore the simple shot of him. Is that this is a time that we express hakara satov, gratitude to Hakadosh Baruch Hu for all the beauties that He's given us in the natural world, the gifts of fruits, the gifts of food, and the Arizal says it's very important that by eating with shem shemayim and by making a bracha and by praising Hashem and by expressing gratitude, we are rectifying and undoing the very first sin of Adam and Chava and Gan Eden. The fate of eating from the Yitzhadas was using the animalistic uh, aspect of eating to rebel against Rebam Shalom. 
And now we're taking that same eating, the eating of fruits, the eating of various entities, and by making a bracha and by expressing a karasatov, a gratitude to Hashem, we are mavakal ourselves, we are making ourselves subservient to our Kodesh Baruch Hu, and that undoes the chet of the Eitz Hadas. That's a very, very powerful point. Well, Sefer Yitzira, uh, one of the earliest Kabbalistic works, uh, ascribed to either Avram Avinu or even to other Marisha, actually says that the koach of the month of Shvat in general is that the animal impulses of Achit can be elevated and consecrated and given back to our Kodesh Baruch and this is why the brachos are important. This is why we try to make as, as many different types of brachos as we can. Each bracha brings spiritual energy uh, energy into the world. And again, the idea of gratitude is something not to be taken for granted. Rabbi Victor Miller is at Sal, one of the great, great teachers of Torah. In his thousands of pages of written work and in his thousands of tapes, probably the single idea that he talked about the most was the idea of Akara Satov, I mentioned to, to a lot of you guys that in one of his uh, books, uh, I think with Joy So Youth, he actually gives you a 20-page thing that you think about before you eat an apple or a banana, before you make a bracha. You think about the color and the texture and the smell, and think about the chesed of Hashem. If food would simply be a matter of keeping you alive, a Kodesh could have made, you know, glop, you know, like they give the astronauts or whatever, like a bunch of tasteless, odorless, Stuff that gives you calories. But Akash Parker gave you color and texture and smell and variety and taste. This is not necessary at all for survival. But the Chavis Lovas points out that's a And this is what we look at. Look at the colors, look at the textures. There's another thing as well. You know, Jews are largely known as urban creatures. You know, whether you're in Kodo learning or whether you're uh, in business, you tend to be you know, in business. Aren't that many Jewish farmers around? Although it's interesting, there was a great, great guddle, a very, very chashu, on the top of the big rack, who was a professor of for many years, of the Yedalmi Nagel. Very, very chashu, not, not that well known. But uh, he had a sheet that he wanted to try to be the kind of all the mitzvahs of the Torah, including, you know, Peya. So he had a little farm, and uh, he, was a, he was the Rosh Kolo of Kolo Chazanish. But once in a while he would say, I can't give share today, I have to go harvest the wheat. So he felt there wasn't in here. But the truth of the matter is that although we are urban creatures because of historical circumstances, but the Torah clearly envisioned that Yiddin would be very much connected to the land. And we find that a person who's connected to the land has a greater intuitive aspect of Amun than a person who is not. Because when we make our money by our professional endeavors, we live by the illusion, it is an illusion, that you know we dictate our success. If I'm a good lawyer, I'll get money. If I'm a bad lawyer, I won't get money. But when you're a farmer, and you know that so much of what happens depends on circumstances beyond your control, the rain, the sun, you know that everything comes from us. That is why Chazal said, the order of Zerayim in the Mishnah that deals with agriculture is called the order of Amun. So, so too, when we look at the produce of the earth, we think about the fact that everything comes from Hashem. That even if we sit in our lawyers' offices or accountants or our stores or our businesses or our stockbroking, it all comes from our It's all payrolls of our Kaddish It's like the mud that comes from that. So, all of this is Pashat Pashat, Hakaras Atayif. Be grateful. Know where this chesed comes from. Contemplate the beauties and the textures and the sights and the smells and the tastes. Because that's part of the chesed that surrounds us all the time. That's Pashat Shah, and again, Pashat Shah is not always wrong. Basically, uh, this is a very simple and important perspective for us to have in there. Learn to be grateful for the chesed of Hashem. But there is, of course, deeper meanings as well. Uh, the Arizal teaches that uh, the Pasuk tells us that Kia Ata makes us up. Although there is a question that we interpret it to me is a human being is compared to a tree. In what way? So the Arizal says, just like a tree, we're an upside down tree. A tree is rooted in the earth and reaches up to Shamayim. We are rooted in Shamayim, that's our origin, and we come down into the earth. But just like a physical tree can only survive, can only live, can only flourish, when its roots are strongly connected to its source, so too we live spiritually 
only when our roots are connected to our Kaddish Baruch Hu, our Kaddish Baruch Hu's will, and our Kaddish Baruch Hu's Torah, and Mitzvah, we are a tree. Now, what's the connection of Tu Bishvat to the Adam, after all? The mission itself says the Rosh Hashanah for people is, of course, the first of Tishrei, not Tu Bishvat. So the Chidush Yarin, the first Gera Rebbe, offers a very, very beautiful explanation. The Gemara explains why is Tu Bishvat significant for trees? Because Tu Bishvat, by the time Tu Bishvat comes along, according to Beis Hillel, more than 50% of the rainy season, which lasts from Cheshvan to Nisan, has gone by. And therefore, most of the rain of this year has already fallen. The sap, which will produce the fruits for that year, has risen, ready to emerge, so to speak. And therefore, any fruit that blossomed or budded, I'm deliberately using two words because there's a not focus, but the word I'm not the means, but any fruit that blossomed or budded before Tu Bishvat did so by virtue of last year's roots. And anything that blossoms or buds after Tu Bishvat is a result of the cumulative effect of this year. So says the Kedusha Yarmin, rain symbolically is understood as all of the benevolence and all of the blessings of Hashem, <laughs> including spiritual attainments. On Rosh Hashanah, God allocates to us the spiritual treasures that we're capable of achieving. But we don't draw on those treasures till after Tu Bishvat. Meaning, just like a tree that blossoms before Tu Bishvat is growing on last year's rain, our accomplishments prior to Tu Bishvat is last year's book. On Tu Bishvat, we draw on a whole new source of brachos and energy, which is why the Kedusha Arim says, a person who is sensitive will be able to see a difference in the Ravodah Hashem, because they are drawing on new, uncapped reservoirs and sources. It is the Geshem of the new year, the spiritual force of the new year. And he even says, that's why Beishamai makes this man two weeks earlier, because the Gemara says in Yavamos, Beishamai Machadizit say, Beishamai had sharper minds. Their perhaps were more sensitive. They could see the leaking of the new potentials even a little bit earlier than they may saw. But what this means is that this is a time for renewal. We are the trees as well. We are those who are rooted in Shemayim. And this is a time when Shem makes new potential available. I should say as well that this is a time that to think about our connection to Eretz Yisrael. We hope to pray, of course, and I know that so many of you have been so much liach in your learning of Torah and keeping mitzvahs and becoming Avde Hashem. But we also hope that one of the things you'll also acquire, and hopefully may have it already, is a love for Eretz Yisrael. There is a machlokas among the commentators. If living in Eretz Yisrael is one of the 613 mitzvahs or not, Rambam says it is. Rambam doesn't mention it, and there's an argument, what is the interpretation of Rambam? But the point is, in many, many ways, this is a theoretical dispute. Because whether or not it is technically one of the 613 mitzvahs, Rambam himself devotes many pages based on the Gemara Kisubis regarding the spiritual blessings of living in proximity to our Kaddish Baruch Hu in Eretz Yisrael. And although Chazal do tell us that Yishev Eretz Yisrael uh, does have Yisurin, does have uh, pain, and this is something that any Yola knows without uh, even a Munas Bachamim, this is something that one uh, sees. But one has to know that everything important in life, and everything significant in life, takes a certain amount of struggle. In Baruch Hashem, the struggles are much, much, much less than they used to be. And now you can get uh, ben and Jerry's, you can get uh, whatever you want. Happy guys, you have a good problem like that. But okay, I'm sure they'll, they'll, they'll work with that as well. Uh, and when we think about the land, we think about the payros. We're thinking most specifically about the Rafa of Eretz So, Yezus Hashem, we should all be so okay to renewal, to be conscious, to be grateful for the physical trees and fruits and vegetables and land that Hashem has given us, but also to remember that we are also the trees that are rooted in Shemayim, and our roots have to be strong and connected. And that way, may all of us be so okay to tap the new potential that Kajwarka makes available for us. Amen. 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 Amen.